the prismatic effects of bubbles are going to help us make a prismatic pour. In today's video, we are taking acrylic pouring paints to a whole new level. Once we do our acrylic pour and let it dry, we're going to take bubbles to create a beautiful prismatic pour. So let's get started. welcome back to another video so I'm gonna jump right in here today we are carrying on and doing another prismatic pour the last one turned out so beautiful I'm going to show you a different technique that you can incorporate it into today and I have very high hopes that this is going to be fantastic so this is a very beautiful color called Mermaid Scales, and this is from Color Art. It's a pigment, so I don't know if you'll see it or not. There you go. It's a very, very light, light blue, like a sea foam, green almost, and it's got this beautiful green color shift to it, or a green sparkle. Then I just have here some Amsterdam turquoise blue. I have some Amsterdam turquoise green in this bottle right here. And then in this cup, I have teal zircon from Color Art. This is another pigment. Very, very beautiful. Shimmery, aqua, bluish green color. Then I have Amsterdam titanium white. I have a black cell activator I made using uh, Australian Floetrol. And for my base paint here, this is just some black wall paint that I got from Walmart. It's a semi-gloss black wall paint. So what I'm going to do first is coat my canvas, which is a 12 by 24 canvas. It's a gallery one. So it's got the thick sides. And I'm just going to dump this black wall paint that is just right out of the can. And I thinned it with a little bit of water because it was really thick. But I'll show you the uh, trace there on the surface. It flows off the stick and then leaves a little mound and quickly disappears. All right, And all of my colors, including my cell activator, they're all the same consistency. It's very important to have the same consistency or else your paints can crack because they don't dry at the same rate of speed. So for beginners out there, always remember, it's not so important when it comes to measuring the amount of products that you put into your paints. It's the water that is the most important and how thin it is. So for example, if I was just using paint and flow trawl today or paint and pouring medium, my paint would behave exactly the same as far as effects goes if I put a tablespoon of flow trawl into my paint or I put a gallon of it into my paint. The effects will always be the same. It's the consistency that matters the most and it matters because again, if it they're not all the same consistency, you're going to have paints that dry faster than the others on the canvas and they will crack. So just remember that. So here we go. I'm just going to pour this on and tilt around until it's all covered. So as I was just talking about there, the water, when you get to the water part, how much water you put in the paint is what matters the most. Not how much flow trial or pouring medium you add to your paint. It's the water part that matters the most. If you need help with consistency for all the different techniques there are out there in the description of this video, you'll find a link called the consistency chart video. Click on that link, go watch that video. It will help you out tremendously. Okay, so the first part of this technique is creating an acrylic pour. We want to create an acrylic pour that we can alter afterwards with our special texture and our special flakes and or pigments. Now, if you don't have chameleon flakes, you do not need to use them to do this technique. You can use 
your pigments, if you have mica powders or primary elements will work. You can use uh, tube paint. You do not need to have the special chameleon flakes that I use. But if you want a link for them, you can get them off Amazon pretty cheap. I will have that for you in the description along with how I mixed up my paints today. So I'm using a combination of pigments and two paints today, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm just laying them down in this pattern. We're going to be swiping the pattern out to be like a starburst pattern. Some people call it a sunflower swipe. There's all different names that people call this, but we're going to be essentially swiping over the paint from the center outwards. All right, now that I've made a big mess, <laughs> I'm gonna torch this really quick and then I'm gonna see if I could tilt it backwards a little bit, just because I know there's a lot of paint on that canvas, the colored paint. And um, again, that's another thing that causes cracking if you leave too much paint on the canvas. How do you know if there's too much paint on the canvas if you, um, have puddles of paint that are just sitting on there. You should really just have a nice thin layer of paint, no matter what the design is, when you're done doing your artwork, okay? Should never have like big pools of it. So just kind of tilting it back a little bit because you see that is a lot of color. But I also don't want to lose a lot of my color and I also don't want to close up my circle here in the middle. So we'll stop right there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start swiping. All right, I'm going to take a piece of paper or a palette knife or an old business card in this case. I'm gonna put some cell activator right on the edge of the card, about, um, I don't know, a quarter way up the card. And then I'm gonna slowly swipe it over all of the colors going outwards, almost like a starburst shape. So here we go. Again, this is Australian Floetrol that I'm using in my black paint. Going to just spread it out with a stick like that. And then starting right in the center here, I'm gonna just swoop over the colors. Hopefully my cards don't bend up on me here. Just like that. I can tell there's a lot of color on there still. So I'm going to tilt a little more of this off. I could tell just by the way that it's swiping that there's way too much color on here. All right, let me start over. All right, let's try this one here. And then if I don't like the pattern that it's making, I'll switch back to the paper. Much better, much better swiping. So I realize the lacing and the cells are hard to see with these colors. I have the bright white studio light on and the teal is just so powerful that it's hard to see the patterns, but they are developing. It's a beautiful blue green color palette. And um, once you see it up close, you'll, you'll uh, see better what I'm talking about. It's just very hard to film some of these colors. 
especially when you're using black as a background. It just tends to be very hard to film. But anyway, I'm going to let you watch this part of the swiping and then I'll be back. So here it is after I'm done swiping. I was so, so very happy with how this came out. And then a disaster struck. And you'll see that in the next frame. But anyway, look how pretty. That palette, I just absolutely love it. So this is a perfect example of what a starburst or sunflower swipe looks like. And here are the primary elements and the other paints that I used. They're just so pretty. You can see a little bit of a pink hue in there. That's because one of the primary elements that I used had a little bit of a pink tint to it. But again, it's just, it's really, really pretty. So let me have this dry and then I'm going to show you what happened. Okay, so this dried beautifully. As you can see, no cracks or anything like that. However, my canvas wasn't level, so it got wonky in some areas here. As you can see, the patterns are just like... <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. It's okay because some of these areas I'm going to be now putting some texture over and you're not even going to see them. All right, so what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to get out some black acrylic paint and a paintbrush, and we are going to start kind of covering up some of these areas so that they're ready for the next step. Another thing I have to do are the sides here. I have to paint them black because that just looks silly there, right? Don't forget about your sides when you're doing art like this. Very important that everything looks like it's supposed to be there. So let me show you something here. See right here how it's black and then we can go up this way here. So what I'll do is I'll leave this area here and kind of create the texture around it and then probably black out like I'll come up this way, black out a little bit of this and then a little bit of this area so it looks like the texture is kind of flowing through. You don't want big blocks of it is what I'm getting at. Like you can have big areas of it, but you want it to look like it's flowing through the other design. So we'll use these bad areas, like these not so good looking areas to our advantage. We'll get rid of those and keep some of these nicer areas intact. Now this will be a little bit of extra work for me, but it's going to ensure that I don't go too crazy with the black paint. I'm going to use a Sharpie to first black out or kind of create a guide for myself so I know where to go with the black paint. So, for example, I'm like I'm not going to color it all in, but I'm going to make it apparent for myself where I need to paint. Up until this point, I was very optimistic still about this painting. And even though it was my fault that the canvas wasn't level and it dried uneven, I still had high hopes for it. But once I started doing this step right here, I realized that the, the petals that were left, going to be left behind, they just didn't look like petals or starburst extensions we'll call them 
It was just too wonky in some areas. So I did the best I could with it. And I blacked out a bunch of the areas and got it ready for the next step, which is adding the texture to turn it into a prismatic pour. I don't know if anyone else is like this, but for me, when I'm doing a painting, if one thing goes wrong, like how, you know, this dried really crazy looking on one side, it kind of throws off my whole mood. And I kind of think no matter how good it I tr or how hard I try, it's not going to look right. And it sets me on a path of destruction. You know, I get that I don't care attitude. I'm just going to do whatever. And here we are. This is what I was left with after I had my little tantrum. But don't give up on me yet. Let's follow through with this. So we need Dawn dish soap in a bowl. Agitate it with some water to create foam. Then we need UV resin and a UV light. Those items are in the description of this video. If you need a hookup for a cheap kit, I think I got the UV light and two bottles of resin for like 25 bucks on Amazon. Very inexpensive. But what you want to do is put down some of this UV resin, a very thin layer of it, spread it out in the area that you want to create texture in. Once you have that done, you're going to come in with some of your bubble foam. You don't want to grab water out of the bowl that you're making this bubble foam in. You just want to grab the upper layer where the, the foam is. You just want to grab some of that and lay it right on top of that wet UV resin and then use the light for about 60 seconds to cure the area. So here we go. Again, people were asking me last video how I made this stuff. It's just dish soap and water. That's it. There's nothing special added to it. Just put some in a bowl or a cup and agitate it with your sink. You know, if you have one of those hoses in your sink, you can use that. Or just the running water itself will create foam. If you find you're not getting a lot of bubbles, just blow into it with a straw and you'll get a ton. Okay, so as I said, lay it down on the wet UV resin. And then once you have the area covered, you're going to go ahead and put the UV light over it for about 60 seconds, 60 to 90 seconds is perfect. Also, don't worry about your foam or bubbles, I should call them. Don't worry about those touching your dry painting. It'll be fine. It's okay if it goes over and touches that. Uh, that paint is permanent once it's dry. So now here's the UV light and I'm kind of just hovering over it going back and forth because I created a really big area and my light wasn't big enough to cover the entire thing. So I'm just going back and forth over it. And through the magic of YouTube, I've sped that up. It was 60 seconds. Then what you do is you scoop the foam off of the surface. Put that foam back in your bowl because you can reuse it. Scoop it off the textured surface and then lightly pat down the area with a paper towel. And then lift up your paper towel and be amazed at what you see. This has to be the coolest look in the entire world. I'm just, I know a lot of people are probably like, big deal, it just looks like craters. I love mixed media, so anything like this just drives me crazy. So here we go. We'll put another uh, little area down, and then I won't bore you with covering the entire canvas in this stuff because it's just repeating the same process over and over again. I'm going to take the UV resin. I'm going to take my time and work it in between those little areas so that I get some texture in that small black area there in between um, where I did the swipe and it's kind of like blank. I'll work it up to the uh, center that I drew, that little center of the flower, and then push it up into these little blank areas. This way it looks like the texture is crawling up through my swipe when it's done.
Now, because this area was so intricate going inside of that swipe, I decided not to push my luck and just did that little tiny area on its own, cured it, and then moved on to do the longer black area in between the swipes. So again, through the magic of YouTube, a minute has passed and now we remove the foam, put it back in our bucket to reuse it, and then expose the area by tapping it off or drying it off with a paper towel. So you can see here how it looks like it's crawling up through that swipe. So again, now I'll just continue onwards and finish up between the two swipes. 2,000 years later. And here we are, all done with the texture part. So my idea was to have a swipe and then a swipe of, well, not a swipe, an area of texture, a swipe, an area of texture. But because my painting moved, it was a no-go. I had it all over the place. So it still looks cool, but it's not the pattern that I was looking for or the composition. But... When you add stuff like this, like these beautiful chameleon powders, nothing else matters. I mean, look at this stuff. It is absolutely amazing. And for this stuff, you don't need a lot. Just put a little bit on the end of a dry brush and dry rub it over that texture and it grabs onto the texture. This teal color was absolutely bonkers. I cannot wait. For you to see it finished. While I have a second to talk to you here, I want to mention a uh, soap that is for sale. I have a few bars of each left, so I'm going to pop up on the screen which ones I have left, and at the end of the video, I'm going to also show you pictures of those, okay? So if you're interested in my homemade cold process soap, stay tuned to the end. So here it is with the chameleon pigment all over it. The texture is just phenomenal. Now, I'm not very happy with the pattern. It kind of looks like a starburst still, but again, it was just, it's off. It's not what I wanted. And I'm hoping in my next two videos that I can redeem myself because I've done another one, a pink one that, I'm hoping I can get it to do what I want this time. It's drying right now. So far, it's drying good. So fingers crossed. Anyway, I want to show you this before I go ahead and finish it. So you can see the sparkle because technically you don't have to spray it with varnish or anything like that. It has just a beautiful sparkle all on its own. I mean, look at it. It looks like it's just little twinkling lights and this specific chameleon pigment matches perfectly with the paints that I used for the swipe but yeah we're going to now move on to the next step and I'm going to finish it with you and we're going to see if we lose some of this effect covering the painting in resin because that is one question I got a lot why can't you cover this in resin? Now, personally, I felt that you would lose some of that effect if you put a layer of resin over this. So let's find out if it stays this way or if, in fact, we do lose some of the texture. I figured this would be the perfect painting to, to test on to see, you know, if resin will fill in any of those holes. Because let's face it, Pouring resin on a canvas is a lot different than when you see people using this bubble technique in resin coasters. They call it the dragon scale technique. I think that this resin is going to kill a little bit of the look that the texture has. Like you'll still be able to see it, but... Is it going to be as pronounced as when it doesn't have anything on the surface? So I took some KS Liquid Art Ultra UV Resin, 
poured it on top of the painting, smeared it all over the surface and the sides. Always make sure you get your sides. And then you're going to want to torch the painting to pop your air bubbles at least two to three times, waiting about five minutes in between each torching. So here I'll take a look with my flash while it's still wet. Look at that sparkle. It's just like so phenomenal. And you're seeing the two-tone color now of the chameleon pigment because it's a green that shifts to a blue, a turquoise or maybe a teal blue, we'll say. So you're seeing a lot of green at this point, like an olive green, which is really cool. So let's let this dry and then we'll take a closer look at it 24 hours from now. So if you're interested in soap, here's what I have left. Green tea aloe, I have three. Grapefruit mango, I have four. Honey bunches of goat milk soap, I have two. And then there is a low quantity left of citrus orange, cherry lemonade, snowman balls, and coming out in a few weeks, I have three to four brand new soaps. Now I'm going to kind of hold off on announcing soaps that are coming out because what's happening is people are not listening to my directions for the release dates. And even though I give a date in the video of when it will be available, they're still emailing me asking me to purchase. So I think I'm confusing people. So what I'm going to do from now on is not say anything until it's ready. So once the new batches are ready, you will be the first to know. I do, however, want to thank everybody that has ordered. I have been overwhelmed and humbled with how many people have ordered soap. So thank you very much for that. It's just another way to help my channel and help your skin. So if you're interested in learning what bars and scents I still have available, check out the description of this video. I have pricing and all of that listed. If you're interested, send me an email art by Tammy at yahoo.com and please include your address so I can send you a quote for shipping. But anyway, let's get back to our painting. Here are the finished dried results. Again, the sparkle in these pieces and the effects of that texture are absolutely outstanding. It really does look like for all you people out there that remember bedazzling things, it looks like I took a bunch of gemstones and bedazzled my painting. It's just really cool. It looks like water drops too, uh, like little raindrops, just a really, really cool effect. Again, I'm not too happy with the way the swipe went, but it is what it is. I got to make a piece of art and have some fun and relax. The center in the black area there, you'll see that uh, chameleon pigment. I kind of just sprinkled it in there and around the painting just to have it sparkle more. <laughs> you can never have more sparkle. But anyway, last week I told you that you probably shouldn't resin this because I felt like you would lose some of the effects. I was wrong. I mean, well, I was wrong and I wasn't wrong. Before I resined this, you saw more of the teal in the, the pigment. Now you're seeing more of the green. But the resin did not fill in those craters. So I'm eating crow, my friends. However, I do feel like I like it better without the resin. Without the resin, you can physically see on the surface the texture with the resin. You can see it through the resin, but it's not, you know, visibly like, I don't know how to explain it. Like the texture, you can visibly see it on the canvas. Here it looks like there's a sheet of glass over it. You can see it, but you don't see the the grittiness of it. But anyway, it's up to you if you like it this way or if you like it the way it was before I put the resin on, which is this. So it's more of an aesthetic thing. So whichever way you like, you can also do a spray coat of varnish. So thank you very much for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to click like on your way out. Hit the subscribe button if you are not subscribed already. And don't forget to leave a comment. I want to thank you all for joining me. And until the next time, which is next Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
happy pouring.